Praise the Lord, everybody. If you're in this room, that means you are blessed because you made it to 2023. So you should say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because you are here. Amen. You are blessed and hallelujah. Amen. This morning we came to tell you today will be the best day of your life. Amen. The best day of your life.
another day we have blessed, been blessed, and happy new year to you all. Happy new year. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank Everyone you, that came, yes, please stand. Let's show reverence to God this yes, morning. Thank you, Jesus. Because he deserves it. Let's give him a high praise this morning. Because he deserves it. And let us pray. Father, we bow this morning with a heart full of thanksgiving. Thanking you, O oh God, for letting us all see our brand new. Amen. Through all of our circumstances in 2022, Thank you, Jesus. you were there. Yes, Through all of our situations, yes, 2022, yes, Jesus. you were there. Yes, Through all of our bereavement, yes, pain, yes, you were there. Yes, and we want to thank you this morning, oh God, for opening up our eyes this morning. To see a brand new year. Yes. Dear Lord, so many didn't make you. But you saw fit for us to be. Yes. We can't thank you enough for that. Thank you, Jesus. No, God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Yes. Clothing our right mind. Yes. Reasonable portion of health and strength. Yes. The activities of our limbs. Yes. Oh God, we thank you this morning. Thank you. And oh God, we don't come for any form. Any fashion, yes, God. an outside show to a world that's been. Yes. We come this morning, oh God, because we want to lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Realizing that there's healing, yes. there's power, yes. there's protection in that name. Yes. That name kept us yes. from one year to the next. Yes. That name oh, is our father. Yes. That name is our friend. Yes, Jesus. That name is who we depend on. Yes. And we take this morning you, for Jesus. another day. Oh well, God, bless those that woke up sick this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Those that are in hospital. Somebody laid down last night, got a phone call. Somebody woke up this morning. Someone had gone on home to be with you. Comfort them, Lord. Somebody, oh God, is in a prison camp this morning. Somebody's in a nursing home. Somebody's walking the street, don't know which way to turn. Let them realize, oh God, that you are there. All they have to do is just reach out. Reach out to touch. Oh God, we love and we thank you. Oh God, bless those under the sound of our weak voice this morning. Bless the shepherd of this flock. Bless our pastor. Thank you for healing this body, oh God. Bless his companion. Bless his family. Bless his household. Keep it strong, keep it in your will, in your way, and in your word. And bless us. Your children. Oh God, we all say that Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Somebody's got a situation this year. Touch it. We know you can't because you've done it so many times. Thank you, God. Take this service. Thank you, Jesus. Hold it and shake it in your own way. That die will be done. Take us out of self and self-righteousness. Get us on one accord this morning. Let us lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Let us praise like we never praised before. Because you're that good. And you're good too. Hallelujah. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. You give us life. We thank you for life this morning. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for keeping us. Because without you, we wouldn't have no been here. But you kept us and you brought us here. One more time. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Take this service, oh God. Take it right now. Yes, God. Touch our pastor. Touch his word. This yes, Jesus. Oh God, anoint him and anoint his word. Put your hands on it right now. And we know everything's going to be okay. Because we trust in you. You promised you to always be with us. Never leave us up a You said we believe. We have the faith. We'll learn. Let us imitate you being more. Be more like you each day. You do these things, oh God. We're going to keep on lifting up the name of Jesus. Yes, we know you will. We're going to keep on praising. Yes, God. We're going to keep on walking out. Let yes, everybody know that Jesus lives because he lives within us. Yes, In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God.
built to hope on things eternal. Hold to God unchanging hand. Trust in Him. He will not leave you. Whatsoever the years may bring. If by earthly a church in Long Island. Again, we are proud of our son. Thank you, Jesus. The only thing I told the deacon that called me from the church, I told him, you got a good man? Hate to lose it. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. But he is following God's word where he is. Yes. Yes. And I can't tell you how proud I am of that young man. In 2023. In 2023. 
Somebody say amen. Amen. Our text comes from Proverbs 1 and 5. A wise person will listen and continue to learn. An understanding person will gain direction. That's from God's Word translation. Amen. So say amen. Amen. Using our talents to help and serve others. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now I'm trying to refine, you have to see, so I'm trying to refine our theme. I got this from the Sunday school lesson this morning serving one another with love. All right. All right. You like that? Amen. And I heard D.R. Warwick say it like this. We were put on earth to be of service to each other. Yes. So I will pray and ask God to give me a vision. Yes. Yes, God. But I like this using your talents to help and serve others. Amen. Amen. As a general theme for our church. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Lord uses the day of this service. Yes, Lord. One afternoon, a man came home from work to total mayhem in his house. Wow. The three children were outside, still in their pajamas, playing in the mud. Wow. Empty food boxes and wrappers thrown all about the front yard. The door of his, car, his wife's car was open, as was his front door to his house. Okay. Proceeding into the entryway, <coughs> he found an even bigger mess. Mm. What's that mess? The lamp had been knocked over. <laughs> Throw up was waiting against the front wall. In the front room, the TV was loudly blaring, blaring a cartoon channel. Ah. Family room was littered with toys and various clothing items. In the kitchen, ah. the kitchen and dishes filled the sink. Oh, no. Breakfast food was spilled on the counter. Dog food was on the floor. Broken glass lay under the table. A small pile of sand was at the back door. He quickly. Ah. Headed up the stairs, stepping over toys and more clothing, looking for his wife. <laughs> he was worried that she may be ill. Wow. Something serious had happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He found her wow. in the bedroom, still curled up in her bed in her pajamas, reading the book. What? <laughs> she looked up at him wow. and smiled. Hello, man. Hello. How has your day been? Uh, uh, he looked at her bewildered. Yes. And asked, what had happened here today? She again smiled and answered, you know, every day when you come home from work, you ask me, what in the world I did today? Yes. He said. Uh -huh. Well, she said, today I didn't do it. <laughs> now, for the women, I could just say a prayer and we could all go home. <laughs> Amen. But that's what happens when we take each other for granted. to making things happen. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Nice, nice. That's right. So here's a few examples around here. As you found your way into church this morning, yes. and only to name a few because there are so many. Yes. Like the hospitality ministry who get here early and take our temperature and make sure we are safe as we enter the sanctuary, they greet everyone with a smile. 
and welcome. For the usher's ministry, they give out our sermon outline to make sure we're seated safe and comfortable. And let us not overlook a lot of the things that go on around our church because they're just naturally done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Of course, in the course of people's talents, gifts, and abilities, like the music ministry, who practices and labor every week to bring us praise and worship music that urges us into the presence of God. We bless God for our teaching ministries and our marvelous teachers who get down deep, open the word of God into us in unique and sustaining ways. Oh, what talented and gifted teachers we have. And you know what? You ought not take anyone or any ministry for granted. And so today, I want to talk to you as we turn the pages of a new year about using our gifts, talents, and abilities that we've been given to serve others this year. Amen. Yeah. And don't take it for granted, for God has given each of us a gift of talent and an ability to be used in serving and loving him and serving our fellow man. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. Now when I look at the word talent, I'm thinking, what is a talent anyway? Well, I found the talent in the New Testament was a sum of money, but today a talent, according to Webster's Dictionary, is a natural aptitude of skill. It's a general intelligence. It's a mental power. It's a special athletic created, an artistic attitude. And you know what? It only comes from God. Amen. 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 In fact, Jesus in Matthew 29, 25, talked about talents and the parable of the talents, where he said a master was getting ready to go on a trip. Yeah, yeah. He gave one servant five bags of gold. Uh -huh. Gave the other two bags of gold. Uh -huh. And gave one one bag of gold. Yeah, yeah. He left and went on his journey. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And he returned. But the person who had five bags of gold had invested it. And got five bags of gold in return. In other words, he had a total of ten. Yeah, yeah. I had a person with two. He invested the two. He got four bags of gold. Yeah, yeah. But the person with one talent, one bag of gold, he yeah. buried it. Yeah, yeah. And the master was very, very angry at him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he dismissed him from his staff. Yeah. yeah. Now, the interesting thing is that we all have been given talents. That's right, man. That's right. Some have been given more than others, but right. some. Some have been given five talents. Some have been given two talents. Some one talent. Not to whom much is given, much is required. Yes. And most, if not all of us, have been given multiple talents. However, it is up to us to use and develop those talents to expand the kingdom of God and to rescue, lift, and love our fellow man. Yes. Am I right about that? Yes. And my friends, yes. the question that I have for you as we move into 2023, amen, amen. amen. It's how do you use the talent that God has given you to bless others and to expand the kingdom of God? All right. All right. And when called to give an account, yes. you've expanded what you have been given. Amen. In other words, how do you put it in action? In other words, how do you actualize it? In other words, what exactly do you need to do? What do you need to be for God to use you in this world so that people are blessed and that you would have a, a significant part in the drama of life? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So you'll be blessed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And have a great year. Yes, sir. Now, y'all still praying with me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now in honor uh, to stir in the avenues of your mind, uh, I put it in an acrostic, the word talent. 
T A L E N T. And T stands for you need to remain teachable. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Repeat it after me. You need to remain teachable. You see, the first step in using your talents is to remain I don't care how many degrees you have on the wall. I don't care how many schools you went to. There's still stuff that you need to learn. Amen, church. Proverbs one five talks about this whole concept of being teachable, and it shares the concept like this: a wise person will listen and continue to learn. Yeah. Amen. An understanding person will gain direction. Yes, Father. Now, this proverb highlights the basic virtue of the wise, which is a desire to learn. If you're wise, you have a desire to learn. To learn. Yes, sir. Because the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Shows the transition from wisdom to understanding. For the writer of Solomon shared here that once a person is wise and increases in knowledge, they now have a responsibility to pass that knowledge on. Yeah. 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 The ideal motivation for seeking wisdom is not so much to attain it for ourselves, but attaining a passion, obtaining a position where we can guide others. Amen. Because Amen. those who have knowledge and understanding have an inherent responsibility to guide and give wise counsel. That's right. Amen. 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 Now, I want to, I'm not going to keep it too long. I know you've been sitting and dancing for a minute here. I, I want to capitalize on this new year, new you momentum to share the secret of sustained personal development. Which is a teachable spirit. Which helps to develop the tools, somebody say tools. The tools that you and I need to serve and love God and to serve our fellow man. Now, it may sound crazy, but the truth is that growth is only possible when we are willing to adapt a teachable spirit. That's right. That's right. And that means having the passion to learn. Amen. Amen. Possessing an intention to learn daily and reflecting on what uh, that means that looks like and how to apply it. So here are the five practices to help you to develop a teachable spirit. Uh, right. Tell your neighbor, make growth. Make growth. The number one priority. The number one priority. Now, after 40 years or more of ministry, I've come to understand that everything I do is predicated on my personal growth which means I always am reading something. I'm always listening. I'm always searching because you know what? They've always said that if you want to keep something away from black folk, put it in a book. So remember, every opportunity we have is a result of our commitment to stretch and grow ourselves every day. Same goes for all of us. Teach the children that every day we ought to seek to learn something new. Every day, put growth as the top of your priorities. Amen. Every day. Amen. Why? Because iron sharpens iron. Yes, yes, yes. I like the fact that uh, one of our ministers, Minister B, said to me she wanted to develop this Book of Month Club. And you know what? 
If you get involved and read it, you learn something that will help you as you make your way through life. Number two, look for growth possibilities in every situation. Tell your neighbor, look for growth possibilities in every situation. You see, when you're intentional about growth, you come to realize that you're surrounded by growth opportunities every day. George Bernard Shaw said it like this, the possibilities are numerous. Once we decide to act and not react. Yes, 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 yes. Why there's far too many of us why that react to what has been done to us. As opposed to being proactive. Why God has given us a good mind. And God has gifted us to do anything we want to do. So don't let nobody fool you. Go to school and stay in school and get your degree and chart your course. There are both possibilities in every situation and the key is looking for them. Number three. Ask questions because they will help you to grow. You see my friends, Growth doesn't come looking for you. You got to go looking for it. And you got to go and find it. And that means being willing to step outside of yourself by asking questions of people and situations that surround you. Don't you ever think that if you ask a question, somebody's going to think you're not wise because if you ask a question, they'll think you're wiser than you really are. Amen. The fastest way to find out what you don't know is to ask questions. Amen. The best way to deepen your understanding is to ask questions because questions are the keys that open hearts and minds, and especially your own. Amen. Number four, uh -huh. keep track of what you learn. Yes. All right. What I mean by that, well, I mean keep a file, keep a journal, record memos. The point is, if you don't keep a system or create a system of capturing what you learn, you lose it. Because it helps you to layer your learning and expand your growth. Yes, amen, amen. That's why we give these sermon outlines. We're hoping that you'll read it after you get home and that you'll keep it so that you can layer your learning and expand your growth. Yes, yes. And finally, five, yes, share what you learn with us. Yes. Tell your neighbor, share, share. what you learn with us. You see, it's one thing uh, to glean the truth. It's another thing to teach it. When you pass on what you learn to somebody else, you make that lesson your own. And it also multiplies the impact of what you learn because it helps somebody else. And I've always said, if you really want to learn something, teach it. Because if you teach it, you'll understand to go get the information you need that you might share with your students and somebody else. You want to learn something? Teach it. Well, that's why I'm going to leave it today. Remember that if you are to fulfill your calling as the people of a great God, you are called to help and serve others with gifts, talents and abilities that God has given you. Yeah. And you start doing that by having a teachable spirit. Yeah. So as I close, there are many examples in the Bible of folks who have a teachable spirit. Yeah. Look at Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch yeah. in Acts 8. Hallelujah. 
Because there we read about two men that were both teachable. Yeah. Yeah. Philip was teachable in that he was willing to obey the voice of the angel of the Lord to invite uh, him into the desert to teach an Ethiopian eunuch. Yeah. The right. Ethiopian eunuch was teachable because he was willing and glad to receive the interpretation of the scripture yeah, that he was yeah, reading yeah. where Philip explained the details about Jesus yeah. and the work he accomplished on the cross. Yeah. And the Ethiopian eunuch willingly received the word and not only did he believe the word he was taught, but he demonstrated that he believed the word by getting baptized immediately. Yeah. That's a teachable spirit. Yeah. If you look at at King David in 2 Samuel 12, who acknowledged his transgression with the prophet Nathan, who told him that thou art the man. Yeah. And David repented of his transgression. It's from Psalm 51. He told God, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Then he says, I will teach uh, transgressors your way and sinners will be converted to you. So here David realized that when he allowed God to work in his life, he would be a channel to teach others to walk in the ways of God. Amen. No wonder the glorious testimony about David, that he was a man after God's own heart. Yeah, yeah. And the amazing things that occur when one has a teachable spirit will bless your soul bountifully. Well, to be continued next week. But we are blessed today that Jesus has blessed us with another year. Amen. 2023. The, work, the works of him that sent us while it is day. For when night comes, no man can work. And Jesus fixed it so that on a hilltop called Calvary, he purchased our part. And from Rodrigo Rose, he wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger, no room in the inn. At 12 years old, he confounded wise men, the blind see, the lame walk, the dumb speak, the lepers cleansed, the poor have the gospel preached to them. At 30 years old, he began to preach the word. Somebody say yeah. yeah. At 33, they hung him high, yeah. stretched him wide, yeah. dropped him low. Yeah. For you and I, he died. For the Morning. Oh yeah, he arose with all power in his almighty hand. And he told all of us, yes he did, come up to me. All ye that labor and a head of And I'll give you rest. Somebody stand on your feet. Give your neighbor a high five. Thank the Lord for 2023. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Anybody here want to help me praise him? Help me magnify him. Help me glorify him. Help me to lift him up when praise and go up. Bless and come down. Somebody praise him. Somebody magnify him. Somebody glorify him.
The doors of the church is open. Yes, Lord. And Jesus is called. Yes. Saying unto all of us, yes. if you hear my voice, yes. hard not to harm. Yes, Lord. Jesus is telling me to tell you. Yes, Lord. If you want to become a real believer, just raise your hand. I want to. I want to join this church. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. The sister is coming. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. service one more time. Aren't we blessed to be in the place where God bless us? The doors are open. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come my letter. Candidate for baptism. Our Christian experience. Jesus is calling. Hallelujah. Jesus knows him. 
human nature. Amen. Amen. He knows. Yeah, he knows. That if we don't yeah. do something, we're going to live. We'll forget all about it. Yes, yes. Human nature. Yes, sir. And so he tells us. Yes, Lord. This do. This do. And remember us. Me. Yes, Lord. So that we would remember yes. the sacrifice that he made for us. Yes, sir. That hilltop called Calvary. Yes. yes. You remember. Thank you, yes. How you hung, bled, and died. I remember. We might be dead. Yes, Lord. You have the opportunity. Yes, yes, Lord. To have everlasting life. Uh -huh. Don't forget. Yes. Lord, yes. yes. And so let us all repeat after me. First Calvary. First Calvary. Purpose statement. Purpose statement. To bring people. To bring people. To Jesus. To Jesus. Membership. Membership. And his family. And his family. Develop them. To develop them. Christ-like maturity. Christ-like maturity. Equip them. To equip them. The ministry of the church. The ministry of the church. My mission. My mission. In the world. In the world. In order to magnify. In order to magnify. God's name. God's name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And so it was that first. Ah. Thursday before he would go to the hill of harvest called Calvary. Yes. That Thursday, the disciples gathered in an upper room. Jesus gives them final instruction. Yes, yes. First thing you, you and I, we, we read it often, but we don't really think about where it comes from. Uh -huh. He tells them, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me in my father's house. That yes, yes, yes. Oh, he's teaching them that I'm gonna leave you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna leave you a comfort. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And he moves further. Yeah. Final instructions. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. He breaks bread. Yeah. Oh, 
hidup tidak from Calvary. Yes, thank you. We're going to ask all the kids that's in the building, would you come to the altar? All our children in the building, would you come to the altar? We want to give you your gift. Eighteen years old, or with a college ID. <laughs> All our children, you come to the altar. Thank <laughs> you. 